Hello everyone. Uh, in this recitation, we'll teach you about the workflow of homeworks. Over here, we'll teach you how a typical deep learning project usually works. Uh, over here, we'll be doing an MNIST classification using PyTorch. In this notebook, we'll be going through all the steps from start to finish of a typical deep learning project. And we'll use uh, the MNIST dataset, which consists of handwritten uh, digits between zero to nine and use a simple neural network to classify them. So let's start. First thing is you have to set up your entire notebook. Uh, so since we're using Colab, most of these are already installed and you will not need to create any content environments or pip install anything. So over here, we are importing Torch to basically create our models and do the training. Torch vision to basically do any augmentation on the images that we are using or be, uh, to, and to also convert them to tensors. We are using matplotlib to basically plot uh, basically the images or the loss functions, plot summary to see the summary of your model, sklearn to basically check up your uh, metrics such as accuracy, comma, et cetera, tkdm to basically see the num how much time it takes to uh, train for one epoch, and uh, numpy also to basically do any matrix manipulations or uh, mathematical calculations or even uh, to help you plot some stuff. And over here, we'll see what uh, device we're using in our uh, machine. Over here, it can either be CUDA or CPU, where CUDA is basically GPU. In this case, I have already uh, used a runtime, uh, converted my runtime to a T4 GPU, so we'll be seeing most likely CUDA. So let's first set up our entire uh, notebook by importing all the necessary libraries. And yeah, you can see that our device is basically CUDA over here. The next step is to basically do the data loading and processing. We can load the MNIST data set uh, directly from PyTorch and use it uh, to make our data loader. Here, we don't have to separate the validation data set. So we uh, use 20% of the train data and make, uh, to make up our val data set. It is typical to split the training data into a training set and val set. The only processing uh, technique that we are using, uh, using here is basically transforming all the data to a PyTorch tensor so we can feed it into the model. In addition to converting raw images to a tensor, we might also add any augmentation techniques for better uh, for achieving any better performance, but you'll see that in the future assignments. Let's keep things uh, simple for this uh, recitation. So let's finish our data loading. So yeah, we finished our data loading and we have loaded our data. Uh, it, uh, so now let's uh, see uh, what it actually looks like. Understanding the dimension of the data is extremely important as well. Over here, we can see that the features are of shape batch size comma one uh, comma 28 comma 28 where batch size is basically the number of uh, images going in as one data point to your uh, network. Uh, one is basically the number of channels in your image. Uh, 28 cross 28 is basically the height and width of your image. So uh, one uh, channel basically means it's a, a grayscale image. And uh, that's what we're using. Basically, MNIST data set consists of grayscale images only. And since we're using an MLP, which is a multi-layer perceptron, we'll also be flattening our images. So the data that will go to our model will basically be a uh, batch size comma, one into 28 into 28, which is 784. This is because uh, MLP expects a single dimensional input. So now let's plot and see how our uh, images look for the MNIST data set. And as you can see, uh, it looks something like this, where uh, each image is 28 uh, width and 28 height, and it's just a grayscale image. And there are 64 of these images in one uh, data point. So now that we have looked into how our image looks, let's go to the training and evaluation. Over here, we'll be just training a very simple MLP model. Uh, we'll be first uh, telling it what is the input uh, to the model, what will be the hidden size, and what will be the output. So over here, the output size is 10. That's because uh, the MNIST dataset has uh, 10 digits, and we're trying to classify all these 10 digits, uh, which is basically from zero to nine. Uh, the input size over here is 1 cross 28 cross 28, which is basically uh, the uh, size of your image, which is uh, 784, uh, which will go through the model. And hidden size over here uh, is usually an ablation study so, to see which is uh, the best performing one. But over here, to keep things simple, we're using 1024 for now. Uh, after 
telling our what our model is, we'll just uh, find a summary of our model and see how it looks like. So this is the summary of our model. We are basically just giving it uh, input size and then giving an output of 1024. And then from 1024, it goes to 10, which is basically uh, the classification layer from uh, which classifies uh, the image between zero to nine. Next, we basically talk about our uh, optimizers and loss functions. Over here, we'll be going in depth in what uh, are the various optimizers that you can use uh, in the future lectures, which the professor will be teaching. And over here, we are just uh, using the cross entropy laws. Uh, again, uh, all of this will be taught in the lectures, upcoming lectures by the professor as well. So we just define them and we just uh, basically enter it and now uh, we can basically write a helper function to train and evaluate uh, although these helper functions aren't strictly necessary the modularity leads to a cleaner code which is easier to debug so over here if you see the function uh, for training an epoch we start with model.train we first uh, initialize our training loss and then we also initialize the number of true labels and pet labels. So we go through the data loader first uh, with how many data points are in the data loaders. We convert the images to basically the, we put into the device that is needed, uh, which can either be a CPU or a GPU. In our case, it's a GPU. So the device will be CUDA. And then we put the images into the model, which will then give us uh, uh, the, basically it'll give us a size output of batch size comma 10, which is basically the classification between zero to nine. Then we use the cross entropy laws to basically find out what is the actual uh, uh, like loss uh, between uh, the model output and the labels. And then we basically, update our training loss. And then uh, as you can see, we do an argmax to basically uh, get uh, what the model had outputted for each every uh, single uh, image that we gave. And then we just put this inside our uh, list that we have for predict labels. And for true labels, we just give uh, what is the label that we have. Then we just do a loss.backward and optimizer.step. This is to basically do a backward calculation and then to update your optimizers. At the end, uh, we uh, update our train loss by dividing it with the number of data points that is there that will be variable depending on what batch size you keep and how much uh, data you put into the network. And then we also calculate the training accuracy. So evaluation is pretty much similar to uh, how the training is, but over here you'll set your model to evaluation mode so that there will not be any backwards, uh, like basically not uh, any backward calculation happening and we're just trying to call an inference upon your model. But otherwise most of the steps are same. Over here you'll just not be doing any backward uh, uh, gradients flowing through your model. Now let's train our model. So over here, we basically set the number of epochs to be 15. So we'll be training it for 15 epochs. We'll also be noting down what is the loss for our, the training and validation, and also what is the accuracy for training and validation for each epoch so that we can basically plot our loss curves. And as you can see, uh, with the help of TKDM, we are able to see how much time it takes per epoch. It's basically like around seven to eight seconds, so which is very really good. Uh, but if it was uh, in CPU, this would be taking a lot longer. And you'll see in your future homeworks, basically, that, uh, I mean, nearly all your homeworks you'll be using uh, probably GPUs instead of CPUs, uh, except for maybe your homework uh, P1s part ones of your homework. So we are done with four epochs and uh, we'll probably be training it for 15 epochs before we go to visualizing our model performance.
So as you can also be seeing from here, our loss is actually going down pretty significantly from 0 0.25 from the first epoch to uh, going down even further by like seventh epoch, it's going to 0 0.01, which is a good thing. You can also see your accuracy going upwards, which is also nice. And even same thing for your validation uh, loss and accuracy. So we are done with around 10 epochs. Uh, we have five more epochs to go. Uh, yeah, so the model has been trained. Now we can basically visualize the model performance. And here you can see our training loss and validation loss. Uh, in the uh, lectures, we'll also be showing you why this is not a good loss plot, uh, which is uh, basically we'll tell you it's a sign of overfitting that is happening over here. but uh, all these concepts will be taught thoroughly in the lectures, so don't worry too much about it. Uh, this is just to show, this recitation is just to basically show you how to basically train a model from start to finish. And let's plot our training and validation accuracy. And yeah, over here, as you can see, uh, there's different ways of interpreting this graph as well. Uh, most likely one of them is to see where is the converging point. Uh, this is very crucial so that you don't waste uh, the compute that you have in your GPU to keep training your model for basically uh, once your model converges to a particular accuracy. But again, these concepts will be taught in uh, upcoming homeworks as well, and you'll probably be trying to implement it yourself as well. So from the above, graph, we can basically be saying it's clearly overfitting and overfitting is caused by many things such as lack of uh, images, not using augmentations, etc. Uh, again, these concepts we'll be teaching you thoroughly in the future homeworks and also in your classes as well. So let's see the testing. Now that we basically finished our training our model, we have to test it on our test data set to see how it performs in an unseen data. For this particular project, we have the ground truth labels for our test data set. So we just use the eval function with our test data set. Generally speaking, the function you write for evaluation will be extremely similar to the function you write for testing. And you can see the testing accuracy over here was found to be 97.75. So by going through this notebook, we have seen different stages of uh, deep learning project from start to finish. We can refer back to the slides and see how uh, these uh, different stages fit together and the role they play uh, in the overall project. So let's give a small exercise. Uh, the steps we covered in the training uh, simple neural network is quite straightforward, but it can be very daunting during uh, the uh, doing it for the first time. To give you more opportunities for understanding the steps of training a neural network, we are giving you just some small simple exercises. Uh, over here, we have used a network of one hidden layer. MNIST is reasonably a small data set, but let's try increasing the size of the network to three hidden layers with equal dimension or any dimension that you prefer. And you can build and train your networks, uh, see what how does this change the overall performance. And then also I would recommend you to take a few minutes to go over the PyTorch uh, image augmentation function and explore various augmentations that are relevant, uh, relevant to our task and then use it uh, at least, and then at least use two of them uh, and see if this makes any significant improvements. But this is it for the uh, recitation. I hope you guys were able to understand the workflow for your homework and uh, we'll be seeing you in the lectures and future homeworks. Take care.